Tempus Fugit. That's right, I know some Latin, I'm educated. It means time flies. And if you're Kia, time certainly does fly. It hardly seems plausible that it was just 30 short years ago since they entered the market back in 1991 with a rehashed version of the then discontinued Mazda 121 that they called the Pride. Hardly a sterling start. In fact, just 10 short years ago, they were still churning out dreary things like the car ends people carrier. Yet in 2021, Kia took 5% share of the UK market. Now that's thanks in part to being having some wonderful cars in the range and also being very, very popular with the EV market with cars such as the e Nero and the Soul Electric. But how do you build on that? How do you cement that success and how do you grow from there? Well, you bring out a car like this, the new EV6, your first dedicated platform electric vehicle, which will underpin all your future products and, as I say, cement that growing success. Welcome to the Kia EV6, and as always, welcome to Auto EV. Now, before we go on to this week's road test review of the new Kia EV6, it is, of course, time for me to ask you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the little bell button down below so you're notified of when the next video goes live. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. And if you're not, please consider becoming one because it's by doing that it allows us to continue to grow and be the independent voice that we like to think we are. So what is the EV6? Well, as I say, it's Kia's first dedicated electric vehicle platform. It's based on the eGMP chassis that underpins the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and also the Genesis GV60. But more significant than things like the Soul Electric and the new e Nero, be, by being that dedicated EV platform, it future-proofs a lot of technology that we're going to be seeing that the piston engine conversion cars like the Nero and the Soul can't do, such as 400 and 800 volt architecture. It also enters into a very, very crowded marketplace, that sort of 40 to 50,000 pound crossover market. So what have Kia done to sort of like make you sit up and take notice of them? Is it worthy of your attention? And should you be buying this over one of the myriad of competition, good competition that's out there? Well, let's stick it through the Auto EV road test and find out. Well, let's start with styling and they're on to a winner with this, aren't they? I mean, look at it. It looks absolutely sensational. I love the way this bonnet, this short bonnet, just curves down into what Kia call their digital tiger nose. Now, I've never seen a digital tiger, but I'm sure that if there was one, it would probably look a little bit like this. This looks brilliant. There's a lot of other elements of other cars in it. It's not a blatant copy, but you can just kind of see little elements of other things. I think this part here kind of reminds me a little bit of the Volkswagen Scirocco. Don't know what you think. These beautiful kind of slashed headlights that have got this lovely kind of daytime running light um, sort of like signature. It looks sensational. The brushed aluminium Kia logo there. These chiselled chin spoilers down here just looks absolutely fantastic. Wait till you see the rest of it. And then it's a side profile. There's a hint of kind of Jaguar eye pace about the whole kind of car, the kind of slightly taller crossover style without, as I say, absolutely copying it. There's wonderful kind of visor graphic around the front that reminds me of Saab's of old with the painted out, um, sorry, the blacked out A pillar. And then this sort of, this bit here, that kind of, the roof line that slopes in that, that reminds me of the Nissan Skyline GTR, the R35 GTR with that kind of more sort of like chiselled sort of like roof line to it. I love this line here, this one here that comes up and then sweeps right up back into the tail lights and the rear spoiler. I'm not so keen on the, the kind of pop-out door handles. I think they could be slightly better executed, but it is a minor point. These mirrors, they, you can't really see it from that angle, but they're sort of like chiselled out here. They're sculpted for airflow there. And this car's riding on sort of like the Aero 20-inch wheels. Um, a little sort of like the diamond cut here, and then they've got these little kind of Aero plastic covers on them there. And just this part here where this line goes in there into the sort of like the wheel arch extension. I think the whole car just looks phenomenal, but it's the back. Well, wait till you see that, and just look at the rear end on this. Last time I saw a rear end that looked this good, it was in a video called Spinning Around, wearing a pair of gold hot pants. I mean, look at it. There's a bit of element in Aston Martin DBX, and the way these lights come up over here. I put the flashes on so you can see it where the indicators are down there, just 
looks sensational. And then this sculpted rear spoiler that throws airflow down over the rear screen. Now, like Hyundai with Ionic 5 and like Jaguar with I-Pace, no rear wiper. Please, 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 we live in the UK. It's, a it's been raining this weekend. I mean, okay, it's a bit more raked than those other two and therefore it has cleared okay. But backing out your driveway on a rainy day, the camera's way down here. So of course that's all covered in gunk and muck and you don't have a rear wiper to look out of. Anyway, this rear spoiler is quite interesting here because it sort of comes out at the sides here. I don't know if the camera's picking that up and there's some little puddle lights in there, which at night just highlight this beautiful kind of curved rear hip. This is lovely. And as I say, the way that that line just comes up over in there is fantastic. Charging ports hidden at the back there. And then this curve, the way it goes in here, out, and then back down there. I mean, this is Kia's best looking design ever. I mean, they've had some good looking cars in the past. The Stinger is a good looking car, but this is sensational. In fact, it's it's sharp, it's, it's on point, and I think this is the best looking car in its class by a country mile. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Now all that style is all very well and good, but does it impede into practicality? Well, let's find out, shall we? The boot space is between 480 and 490 litres, depending on whether or not you have the high-spec audio system fitted. Now that's smaller than the Ionic 5, that has 531 litres. And it's also smaller than the Audi Q4 e-tron, but it is bigger than the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Nissan Aria, the forthcoming Nissan Aria as well. But it is way, way down on the likes of the Tesla Model Y, another car that it competes with. So it's somewhere sort of in the middle, depending obviously on what you're looking at. It's a reasonably good, you know, sort of use of space. It's a nice open floor. The downside, however, is for a bespoke EV platform, there's nowhere really to store your cables. I mean, there's a little bit of underfloor storage, but it's, it's tiny. I mean, these bags don't actually fit in there. They don't sort of fit and give you the, 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 the flat floor, which is a bit disappointing, really. Um, so, yeah, they kind of have to go somewhere else. But does it, of course, pass the Auto EV suitcase test? Let's find out. So we've got a large suitcase there. Another large suitcase there. And two small cabin bags there. So yeah, it does actually, and there's a little, and obviously as I say, there's, there's space there for the cable bags or if you had extra rucksacks and you're leaving these at home. Now you can split fold the rear seats in the car as well, 60-40 split, and that's done from the inside here. And when you do that, it does go out to actually 1300 litres. And also as well, the load bay is actually quite flat, which I'll show you in a second. And the entry into the car is also quite flat. Now there is a little bit of space up at the front, but it will depend, like it does on the Hyundai, what car you have. In other words, whether you have an, a rear wheel drive car or an all wheel drive car. So let's go and check that out. So this is an all wheel drive car. So this gets, well, that space there, which is pretty small. It's bigger, obviously, say if you have a rear wheel drive car. I think it's 54 litres if you have a, a, a rear wheel drive car and it's 20 something litres if you have this all wheel drive car, which is, um, well, I don't know, it's enough for that, I suppose. So, rear seat space. <coughs> it's okay, actually. It's pretty decent. Um, so, I'm sitting beside behind myself. I'm five foot seven, five foot eight, somewhere in that sort of region. And I've got plenty of um, knee room. Your feet are forced up a little bit, I will say. And there's not a lot of space under the seats in front. Now, my seat, I tend to have quite a low driving position. But even so, there isn't really anywhere much to put my feet there. So, you can't really kind of stretch out. And I would think if you're much taller than me, you might start to find this bit here can kind of encroaching into you a little bit but in terms of actual space itself it's it's okay you've got these nice kind of grab handles on the backs of the the front seats or maybe a place to kind of hang a coat if you were you've got these little kind of mat pockets this feels a little bit cheap this plastic area here i'm not quite sure why that these kind of seat um, backs are just, they just feel a little bit cheap um, in my opinion, but there you go. Um, USB ports, yeah, you've got connectivity back here and the USB C's, I think they are. Uh, nothing sort of like in there, that's just no space, but a flat floor across. Isofix points are on either side. Um, this spec this specification of car, which is a GT Line S, and we'll come on to specs later. This has got the heated seats the, uh, on the, the outer rear ones, two stage heating, which is up on here, which is nice. I've got a 
a fold down armrest there uh, it's got a little kind of you either have cup holder or you have an open kind of cubby there's a, a load through ski hatch in there as well as i say you can also uh, like you can in the tesla and the high end die you can actually recline the rear seats as well which is quite nice obviously you can get extra little bit of um comfort that way but like i was saying let me just move this seat and let me show you the the folding of this um the folding of this seat if i can because as i say it does actually fold flat so yeah that's a good um a good load space there and as i say nice the fact that there's no step up so if you've been to your local b and q or ikea obviously other home improvement stores are available and um, then it's a nice load floor through a nice flat load floor so well done there kia now like the ionic 5 and mercedes this is one of the best looking dashboards i think you're going to find in an ev it's two 12.3 inch uh, wide screens kind of together and they're curved and it's angled slightly towards the driver so it's a bit like the old kind of fashioned 1980s bmws and saabs where it all feels like it's really angled in towards the driver and i really like that it's really good for ergonomics now it shares its display with an Ionic 5, which does mean that it shares one of the little bugbears I had with it, because when I've got my driving position where I like it, the speed and the range is just slightly cut off behind the rim of the steering wheel. I'd really like it if it was a bit more configurable, like the Q4s, where you could sort of like change a bit more of this, because I just feel like a lot of this in the centres just wasted kind of graphics, and I'd really like it if that was just maybe closer down in there and that was in there, or you... I don't know, you just were able to move them slightly. It does have a head-up display in this trim of car, so that is, you know, it does kind of counter that, so I can see the speed and the speed of the road that I'm on um, in the windscreen. So it's not the end of the world, but as I say, I'd just like to see maybe a little bit more configurable, um, the dashboard to be a bit more configurable. You've got this wonderful, as I say, widescreen, sort of like 12.3-inch infotainment system here that obviously has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, as well so you can obviously use things from that it's touchscreen it's really easy to use depending obviously on what you you want um you've got media controls you, you know your ev sort of like stats as well telling you your battery and your range where you can also set up your charging schedule as well and um, like you can on most of them you know to take um, advantage of cheap tariffs and you know overnight charging and stuff um it'll tell you where the latest um where all the charging stations are as well very good bluetooth obviously standard this dashboard texture is lovely it's this kind of rubberized kind of feel there and it's got this kind of eight, 1980s wallpaper kind of graphic over there that i just think looks brilliant and it's got this wonderful big floating center console that i'm going to come on to later now it's not movable that you get in the ionic 5 but it has the the heater controls for the for the seats and the steering wheel along here these touch sensitive controls this car we've got has got heated seats and ventilated seats it's also got heated steering wheels so they're just along there and it doesn't have an engine start button it's got an ev button which i like it's got the rotary dial controller that you get in the kia e nero which is nice and easy to use you can activate your parking cameras here uh, auto hold um, and parking sensors here i've got a wireless charging pad for mobile a couple of cup holders i've got some good deep storage in there i've got some great nice big door bins that i've got kind of angled grooves for water bottles which is really handy this lovely two spoke steering wheel which is absolute joy to use it's just right for me in terms of its thickness and its diameter it's a little bit the flat bottom but i'm not so bothered too much about that the controls of it fall really easy to hand your brake regeneration paddles are on here um your column stocks nice and easy to see there's a couple of little buttons down here for the electronic part brake the charging flap and the rear hatch um are there this these heating and ventilation controls these are interesting now they're touch sensitive which as everyone knows is a bit of a bugbear of mine but what they do is they they change depending obviously on what you want so at the moment it's set up for heating and if i press that they then change to be the sat nav and radio settings so these rotary dials at the side when you press that button they either are temperature for passenger and driver or their volume and radio seek i mean that's really clever i'd like a little bit more feedback on the buttons if i'm honest as i say it's a bit of a bugbear of mine touch sensitive buttons to try and use on the move you know at a glance but i think that's really clever the way it does that anyway um as i say this massive kind of big floating console here is hovering above a huge big storage bin down there there's a flat floor there there's a usb a and a usb c 
um, charging port down at the front there. The seats themselves on this GT Line S car, they've got this kind of almost kind of suede like material in the middle with vegan leather bolsters and that's really nice it's got a really nice feel to it and it kind of grips you i'm kind of glad it doesn't have leather if i'm honest with you and um, the seats themselves are good there's a really good driving position i'd like a little bit more shoulder support but the actual bases are very good and i can tilt the seat and i got a good range of adjustment um, on them as well steering wheel that adjusted again as i say for reach and rake and you've got your drive mode button here that's nice and handy to activate as well to go between eco sport and normal in terms of the front of the cabin then it's a great place to be the only caveat i'll say to that a bit like the back it's fine if you're a little shorty like me if you're five foot seven five foot eight but i can imagine if you're six foot actually you're going to be quite close to the ceiling my brother-in-law is six foot five and i think he'd struggle a little bit in here if i'm being honest with you but otherwise i absolutely love this this is this is one of the nicest interiors i love these screens i love the storage um, and as I say, the driving position for me is, is just perfect. You feel like you do an eye pace. You feel like you're kind of, you're not sitting in a sort of like slightly taller car. You feel that you sit in the car rather than on it. And it, it, it really helps when it comes to the sort of like the performance and the handling, which we'll go on to later. But yeah, this is, again, it's like the exterior. Key is best on the outside. Key is best on the inside as far as I'm concerned. But not so good if you're a taller driver. That's the only black mark I'd say. Now, unlike the Ionic 5, the EV6 only comes with one battery size, which is a 77 kilowatt hour one. That should see a range of up to 328 miles according to the WLTP figures. Now I say up to because that means it depends whether or not you've got the single motor car or the dual motor car. That's for a single motor car on the smallest wheels. If you've got the dual motor car, the all-wheel drive one like I have, that figure drops to 314 miles on 19 inch wheels on the 20s of this car that drops again to 300 miles however that's still good and given the efficiency that we've witnessed and experienced with Kias and Hyundai's in the past that's a very achievable figure as far as I'm concerned so it is rivaling the Tesla now it will take speeds charging speeds of up to 350 kilowatts if you can find a charger delivering that sort of speed things like the new Ionity chargers and Kia are a big investor in those so you do get a discounted rate on them and that will mean you can go from a 10 to 80% charge on one of those chargers in just 18 minutes, which is phenomenal. If it's a more likely 50 kilowatt charger that you stumble across, then that time to go from 10 to 80% is an hour and 13 minutes. From your 7 kilowatt wall box, charging overnight is 7 hours and 20 minutes. Now, I mentioned this in the, um, in the Mercedes EQB video. Kia also do a thing called Kia Charge which a lot of manufacturers are now sort of doing, which basically means that you get one RFID card so you can use it across multiple um, operators in terms of charging. So you're not having to download lots of apps and things. So it all comes through in one invoice. And again, I've used it on the Kia e Nero video that we did in the summer on my family trip to Scotland. That was a really, really great way of doing it. It meant I just didn't need to download loads of apps when I was charging the car up. And if you haven't seen that video, we'll pop a link up below, um, above so you can see it. The other thing the Kia comes with, like the Hyundai, is a vehicle to load system. So in other words, you're able to charge external utilities by an adapter that plugs in there. So the car will deliver a slow charge to them. Now, as I say, you can have the EV6 with either a single motor, rear wheel drive um, option, which puts out 221 brake horsepower and does not to 60 in 7.3 seconds. Now, that's probably going to be about you know more than adequate for most people and it's very much on par with the e nero's performance but this is the dual motor all-wheel drive car that i have that puts the power up to 326 brake horsepower and it drops the knot to 60 time to 5.3 seconds so very much on par with the tesla model y long range that we drove a few weeks back but and i know i said back then in terms of suv compact crossovers do do they really need that level of performance um it's fine having it as long as everything else is engineered to accept it and i'm pleased to say that's where the kia really wins in my opinion this is a brilliant car to drive in terms of the performance that's available now as usual you have got your different drive modes eco normal and sport the kia also has one called snow um, which i assume just 
sets it all up nicely for torque vectoring and such like, but we don't have any snow for me to try it, so I can't tell you for sure. But in normal mode, the car feels pretty normal, if I'm being honest with you. Everything's got just a nice weight to it. Everything feels really good. The car turns in the corners well. It grips really well. It steers really well. There's nothing you could complain about. But there's also nothing to get really excited about either. And you think, well, what's all the fuss about? Well, the fuss is simply by taking the car into sport mode. And my goodness me, does it change the character of this car? This thing just flies now. And more than that, it's the refinement that comes with it. Everything sharpens up, but nothing feels out of control. It never feels just like it's getting away from you, like the Tesla sometimes does. And I say that traffic light Grand Prix is all well and good, but if the thing starts to topple over in corners and just feels a bit lumpy and wooden in other places, then what's the point? This doesn't. This really does feel like the I-Pace. It feels a bit like the Porsche Taycan. It just, everything just feels really well engineered and just hunkered down and the, the chassis balance that you get from it is absolutely incredible. Now the driving position, as I said, is really good for me. And as I say, I'm sure taller people are gonna find that a little bit more encroaching into them but it's absolutely fine for me and the car kind of wraps around me and just gives me a really good view as I say I love the dashboard layout I love the driving position I have the steering wheel feels incredible to hold it's just the right amount of thickness it's just the right diameter I really like it and all the little controls that I'm going to need while I'm driving the car such as the drive modes the buttons mounted on the steering wheel, the brake regeneration like Kia normally do, it's mounted via these paddles behind the steering wheel. It's not in a sub menu that I've got to go in and find. It's nice and easy to get to. So you've got the two paddles and you've got different levels of regeneration depending obviously on what you want. You can take it off completely so the car just coasts. So when you're out on the motorway um, and you want to get your foot off the accelerator so you're not using power all the time, the car will just coast. Or then, as I say, you've got another level you can go up through, level one, level two, and level three. If you pull and hold it, it goes into max, and that is effectively the car in one pedal driving, and it's a really good system. The brakes have a really good bite to them, they've got a really good feel to them. And all of the controls for the driver in terms of, you know, the pedals, they just feel right. When you push on the brake pedal, there's no deadness to it. It feels like the brakes are really biting. The grip level from this all-wheel drive, oh, so that's me just wandering on a white line there. Let me turn that off, because you can do that from the steering wheel as well. You just press and hold the driver aid button there. Again, nice and easy, very simple. I don't have to go into the menu to do it. Um, where was it? Yeah, so anyway, the grip level from this all-wheel drive car, it's staggering, it really is. It's got such a good level of grip. You, in a bend, mid-bend, and just plant the foot down, it just grips and goes and says, hmm, what is that all you've got it's staggering it really is this is a brilliant car to drive but as i say like the e-nero its refinement is on another level as well and that's where i've always found kia slightly better than hyundai they just sorry there's a parcel in the back that keeps rolling around so my apologies for the noise there that's picking up and um, this is where i find kia much better than hyundai is just the level of refinement in the car is superb the wind noise is kept to a minimum everything just feels slick it just feels it i don't know how to describe it it just it feels like another level up from hyundai and it feels like it's really worth the money and as i say Anybody that was thinking, you know, why? Why would you spend £50,000 on a car that has a Kia badge on it? You need to drive this, because this is, this is incredible. You'd never know this was a Kia. If you taped over this badge and gave it to somebody to drive, Kia is not the car they would say it is. But if this is where they are, all future product is going to be something else. What else can I say about it? Well, there's a good load of safety in the car as well. And it's got the little thing like the Hyundai has where you've got the blind spot monitoring. There's a little camera mounted on the mirror. And when you flick your indicator on, you get a little, um, you know, on whatever side that you've gone on, 
you get a little display on the dashboard that tells you what's in your blind spot and that's really clever it's a really simple little system and I really like that and of course you've obviously got all your usual things like lane keep assist you've got your radar guided cruise control which you would expect everything's just there for you to use and also as well safety's been in the safety's been in the news quite a lot at the moment with the EVs with Renault having a relatively poor performance of the Zoe but this has got airbags left, right and centre and I don't know what the end cap rating of it actually is but it's build quality feels like it should be right up there this is Audi levels of build quality in this car there's not a rattle, there's not a squeak nothing and everything to say just, the only thing is that plastic on the back of the seats that's the only thing I can criticise in terms of the actual sort of like materials used in the cabin everything else just feels wonderful and it, from a point of view of a driver I'd like just a little bit more support from the seats on my shoulders but other than that this is perfect my wife drove this car over the weekend and she came back and said of all the EVs we've had, of all the EVs she's driven, this was her favourite. She said the only thing I can criticise it for, she said she found the head-up display a little bit distracting because she's not used to using them. And she said, that's it. She says, other than that, she said, that is an absolutely brilliant car. Now that is high praise indeed from her. I love it. I absolutely love this car. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, the EV6 range starts with the Air trim at £41,000. Then you move up into the GT line and GT line S, which this car is, and that's at £53,000. And in between those two prices, there are a, a myriad of options available because they're single motor cars, and dual motor cars, cars with heat pumps, cars without heat pumps. So do make sure you check either with your local Kia dealer or on the website before you make a final decision on the actual car you're looking at. Later in 2022, Kia will also launch the EV6 GT, which is their high-performance version with 577 brake horsepower. And that's going to go up against cars like the Tesla Model Y Performance and the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT, and probably even rival cars like the Jaguar I-Pace. But price-wise, that's going to start from about £58,000, which, I know it sounds silly to say it, but given those other cars in the competition being much more expensive, it's a bit of a bargain. So, the competition for the EV6. Well, like I said, right at the very, very start of the video, this is probably the most hotly contested space in the market at the moment, this sort of small crossover compact SUV sector. So what others may you consider? Well, of course, from Volkswagen Group, we've got things such as the Volkswagen ID4, it's got as ENIAC, Audi Q4 e-tron, sister brand Hyundai, the Ionic 5, a car we absolutely adore. That's bang on the same money as this car and obviously uses the same underpinnings and architecture, but with a slightly broader range, because as I say, bear in mind you, you can have that car with a slightly smaller battery for the more kind of budget conscious amongst you. Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now that is available as well with the new GT variant, which is going to compete with the EV6 GT, the performance version of this car. And as we've said before, Tesla's Model Y. It starts at £55,000 and it's got scintillating performance and obviously a huge cabin. So of course that's going to compete very, um, directly with this car and of course the performance version of that is a competitor for the GT. Jaguar I-Pace, now you may scoff at that because they say it starts at sort of mid-60s but that car is very, very similar I think in terms of its ethos and its positioning to where this car actually is. And as I say, once you've got this, sort of like the GT version, the performance version of the EV6 at £58,000, that's tantalisingly close to the starting price of an I-Pace. So there is a huge amount of cars out there to consider, with even more coming. Bear in mind, we've got Nissan's Aria about to descend upon us as well. So there's plenty to choose from, and the EV6 isn't going to have an easy time of it. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the Kia EV6. We like its design its range and efficiency and charging speeds, the interior design and storage, and its performance and handling. We don't like that the heat pump is an option. No cable storage. Some of the minor controls are difficult to use on the move. Headroom is a little bit tight for taller drivers, but little else. 
It's fair to say 2021 has been a real standout year for this sort of class of car in the EV market space, the compact crossover SUV style of cars. We've already seen such wonderful cars as the Skoda Enyaq, um, the Audi Q4 e-tron, the Ford Mustang, the Tesla Model Y. And they've all come in and they've all sort of delivered on their promises. So to be a standout car in that market space takes a real, real talent. Now, back in the summer, when I drove the Kia e Nero, I said if the new EV6 was half as good as that car, then I'd be delighted. Well, the EV6 isn't half as good as the e Nero. It's so much better than that. It takes everything that we love about the e Nero, its ease of use, its practicality, its functionality, and then just builds on it. It gives us style, it gives us performance, it gives us handling, it, it, it gives us a design that who'd have ever thought you could have stuck a Kia badge onto? The car that I kept thinking about in my time with the EV6 was the Jaguar I-Pace and regular viewers will know up until I, I drove the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo recently that's always been my EV of choice. I've always said that the I-Pace is the car that I would spend my own money on. Well the EV6 reminds me so much of that. Let me just finish this video by saying this now. If you are after a £50,000 compact crossover EV that's fun to drive, stylish to look at, easy to use, has good range and practicality for your family, look no further. This is the car. This goes straight to the top of a very, very talented class, in my opinion. This is an absolute sensation. And the 30 years that it's taken Kia to deliver it to us has been well worth the wait. Thank you once again for watching Auto EV. Your support is what makes us happen. Your continued likes and subscriptions is what helps the channel to grow. So please make sure that you do that. This is not the last video of this year. There's still plenty more to come from us. Just remember, we're also on all social medias. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Give us a like there, please, as well. And remember, autoev.co.uk. If you're now just wetting yourself for even more road test reviews, that's where you'll find them all, or on our YouTube channel. Thank you once again. I'll see you soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe, and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.